I'm joined in studio by one of Ireland's most famous cooks. She's also a well-respected author with more than 10 books to her credit and six television series, and the awards keep coming. Just last week, she won the Avonmore Cookbook of the Year at the Borgosh Energy Irish Book Awards. On top of all of that, she runs one of the most respected cookery schools in the country, but also in the world, uh, taking in students from all over the globe. And it all started with a dream to be a chef. I'm talking, of course, about Doreen Allen, who's joined us in studio to, to impart some of her wisdom uh, in preparing for Christmas. You're very welcome, Doreen. Thank you, Pat. Now, you cook so much all year round. Do you give it a rest at Christmas? <laughs> well, we actually have, uh, at Christmas, we all cook, actually, because this year, uh, gosh, there are nearly 60 of the family will be gathered around Myrtle in Ballymaloo House because we close for three days just over Christmas. That's the only time we close in the year. And so we all get our little jobs from the tiniest little toddler, you know, making place names to laying crackers on the table, etc. So we'll all Everyone have has fun a job to cooking do. together. Yeah. But you won't have much to do therefore. If you, uh, if the labour is divided in any way <laughs> equally, you won't have too much And to we do. do quite a bit of preparation ahead of time, as everybody does to survive Christmas Day. There's a lot you can do ahead of time. Now, do you go for traditional turkey and ham or are you a goose woman or spiced beef person or what? Well, I love a bit of goose, but I have to say that in the end, we always have a really traditional Christmas dinner a nice big juicy turkey there'll probably have to be two this year lots of nice buttery herby stuffing and you know the sprouts the crusty roast potatoes all of that plum pudding trifle See, all of it it is completely traditional completely then. traditional and nobody what is it about Christmas that very often people talk about you know as food writers we write you know column inches of stuff about different alternatives in the end we just want the same thing particularly if people are coming home for Christmas they want what Mammy used to cook you know? absolutely yeah. it's, it's, it's a time and tradition should be honoured. Exactly. I mean, right. it, it is very disappointing when you meet people and they say, oh, we had steak. I know. And Hello. You just think, well, a steak is lovely, <laughs> but, you know. Yes, exactly. And uh, also, there tends to be no leftover steak. And the nicest exactly. part of it is that the leftovers on St. Stephen's Day. Exactly. Or for, for turkey sandwiches and all the various things you can do with, uh, uh, with uh, the, le- the leftovers of everything, for that matter. But in a way, this year as well, when uh, it should be really good to think of absolutely going out of our way, not to waste a scrap of food. You know, I was down in Cork the other day at Penny Dinners, where they're now feeding nearly 1,500 people a week okay. there. And boy, is it a, an eye opener to make us realise how fortunate we are when things are going even half right. So you know? make sure you don't end up throwing a lot of exactly. stuff out. Use up all the leftovers, you know, every scrap. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what are the common mistakes that people make in the prep for Christmas? <laughs> oh gosh, I'm not sure about uh, the common mistakes. But anyway, uh, there are lots of uh, things that you can do ahead of time to make your, your life a bit easier. Obviously, you can make uh, the stuffing and uh, uh, and all of that. And with things like Brussels sprouts, a lot of people hate Brussels sprouts but if you cut the Brussels sprouts in quarters and then cook them in really well salted water mm. very quickly for only three or four minutes then everybody who hated Brussels sprouts will love them a great big dollop of butter and maybe some lovely exertion yeah. olive oil on it as That's well because the seasoning makes a difference I like makes them stir fried myself I think yeah. stir fried well again it's, are, it's all about fast really yeah. it, it mm. is now in terms of cooking the turkey um often tradition prevails as well and what do yes. you do with the giblets and yes. what do you stuff the turkey with or do you have yeah. the stuffing outside the turkey what oh, are your no, tips inside the turkey okay. definitely make this you can make the stuffing a day ahead I, I still love the lovely buttery herby bread stuffing you can put that on the website yeah. I'll give the recipe and but uh, and you can make that the day before and then season the turkey inside put the stuffing into it and straight into the oven and actually I like to soak some butter muslin in butter and then wrap the whole turkey in that and that actually then you don't just pop it into the oven you don't have to baste it or anything and it'll come out beautifully so it bases itself moist. basically with it the, 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 the mut- butter in the muslin exactly now, do you cook it upside down no, no, I don't. I just pop it in in the usual way. Ha- uh, sitting on its... Uh, s- sitting straight into the uh, roasting tin, and uh, but just covered, well covered. Okay. Yeah. And then never higher than moderate. Yeah. Now, some people say, well, you have to put tin foil on the legs or a tin foil of <laughs> this because it cooks at different speeds. Not so. Well, I know they say that, but you know, I don't do that either. <laughs> I, just, I just cover it with the butter muslin and then uh, a couple of hours, two and a half or whatever, three hours later, depending on the size of the turkey, it just comes out and it's lovely. Most. But you know, it's really what is important 
important is to uh, make sure the juices, of course, are running clear from the leg because then you know it's fully cooked. But also just take it out maybe 20 minutes um, before, you know, uh, take it out of the oven. On Christmas Day, of course, oven space is at a premium, but let it rest well. For uh, You know, you can leave it resting for 20 minutes or half an hour, wrap the whole thing in tin foil. Because it'll carve much more carve easily. much better. The juices won't be running out and maybe wrap it in a, in a, a bath towel or something as well to keep it warm while you keep other things warm. What other veg would you tend to serve besides the sprouts? Well, you know, I know it's really traditional too, but, you know, something like cream celery. I mean, how kind of yesterday is that? Yeah. But how delicious, <laughs> you know? Uh, so that's great because you can just reheat that as well. And then roast potatoes, Golden Wonders or Curse Pinks or something, they're really the best for roasting. And toss those. If you have a bit of goose fat or duck fat or even dripping... You can buy beef jars dripping, of, you can. of goose fat now. Yes, you totally can. But even beef dripping, uh, you know, which people would think would kill you, but it's full of vitamin B and so good. They make wonderful roast potatoes, really crusty. Now, what... Do you prepare ahead? What? How far ahead can you do things? Suppose you you want to uh, peel the potatoes. Um, yeah, you and can do, do you, you can store do that them? the you day store them before. Water. Yeah, no, no. I I I'm always discouraging people from storing things uh, in water because it's you know first and foremost the, the the vitamins disappear into the water and the flavour to a great extent. So just you can peel them the day before, pop them into a pot of boiling salted water, bring them up to the boil for a couple of minutes, and then drain them. And then you can pop them into a plastic bag in the fridge, and then next day just toss them in. Because you've already boiled them a little yes. bit. You blanch them sort of thing. Exactly. So. And the Brussels sprouts, they can be prepared the day before as well. But again, don't put them in water. Just put them into a, a bowl, tall bowl, and then cover them with wet kitchen paper or something. And that'll that mean they won't dry out. Mm. Yeah. Um, portion control. You've got yeah. 60 people oh, yeah. now who are going to be scoffing oh, with the grubs. No. Uh, how do you plan for, like, OK, 60 is, is, is well, I mean, not that's for really, most people. We've, this is the most we've ever sat yeah. down. Because well, you see, there's tons be of, unusual. there's four generations, there's, you know, right down to great-grandchildren in Bamaloo. Um, it's quite, <laughs> it's quite a thing uh, but sorry pardon I missed the question No I'm just saying 20 might not be unusual for, yes, it for many families around yes. the place so how do you plan but you know, what quantities uh, Well basically um, you know a, a, a 12 or, or 14 pound turkey would easily feed that number of people and as well as that have a little bit of you know a lot of people have a ham with it but you know I love streaky bacon streaky bacon is a fraction of the price much quicker to cook particularly when you have lots of pots and pans going on and then you can glaze that with a little pineapple juice and cloves and sugar delicious and succulent and so easy to carve as well. Mm. Now one of the things you do so well is uh, <laughs> plum pudding and uh, we're going to talk in a moment and you're going to do a little thing with uh, the sauce because it's a special sauce but before you do that I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Ballymaloo and 30 yes. years thereof. Yes. I've been to <laughs> Ballymaloo um, yeah. on a couple of occasions um, and even in daylight, never mind going of an evening, um, <laughs> it's hard enough to find. The back of beyond would, would be probably a fair enough description. So how did it become such a mecca? Well, you know, it became, you know, this is really true Myrtle's vision inspiration, isn't it? Myrtle Allen, my mother, now 89, going on 18, basically. And she, um, you know, opened Ballymaloo. It'll be 50 years, actually, next year. Now, what was it when it started? It was a big country house in the middle of a 400-acre farm. And, of course, my father-in-law was a, a, a farmer and a grower, so they had wonderful produce. And Myrtle gradually learned how to cook. And what and was the grub now? that it, you, When you went down first, what was she serving on the menu? Well, you know, she, was the, she wrote the menu every single single day depending on what was in the farm and the gardens which was unheard of at that time most restaurants wrote the menu and it was the same 10 years later so she cooked in a way like a housewife in that people sometimes think that's a derogatory term it totally isn't so she cooked what was fresh and what was in season and what she didn't have herself on the farm she bought from local farmers and the local butcher and got lovely yeah. fish in from Bally Cotton but it was and traditional cooking on the menu. it was but she would have described it as as country the sort of country house Irish country house cooking the sort of thing you yeah. would have probably Probably if you came to dinner in a house like that, you would have got for dinner. So, so she how did you hear about it? feel her? as though it was like a, a dining in a country house. How, how did you hear it? And well, why did you go down? I mean, you, there, well, there were courses nearer to home, I'm sure, that you could have well, done. I had done hotel and catering management at uh, Carl Brewer Street in Dublin, now DIT. And basically, I wanted to get... I loved cooking. I, I was more interested in that than management. And I just really wanted to get into a top restaurant. But men were chefs and women just ran tea shops or something. So I couldn't get into one of the top restaurants. And I was sort of in despair. I wanted to make uh, exotic sounding things like souffles and homemade ice cream. And one of the senior lecturers, Maura Murnahan, one day met me in a corridor and said to me, look, uh, she was amazed and, and disgusted with me. I hadn't got a job yet. But anyway, and I told her what I wanted. And she said, funny, I was talking, I was at a dinner party the other night. They were talking about this extraordinary woman down in Cork who seems to have opened a restaurant out in her own house, out in, as you would say, the back of beyonds. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they have their own Jersey herd, so she's making homemade ice cream uh, and all of that sort of thing. And I said, that's 
sounds exactly like what I'd like and they have a wall garden lovely fresh herbs and so she couldn't remember her name she came back a few days later with a piece of paper with a name and address on it and she said to me that, that's the woman uh, uh, write to her and of course uh, um, the n- name on the piece of paper was Myrtle Allen who's now my mother-in-law so there we are and the rest is history <laughs> the rest now, is history now you, you cook in uh, other uh, genres besides Irish traditional cooking oh of course cooking, we do you, yes. got, I mean you, you I, recently discovered Mexican cooking uh, now, yes. a lot of people used to think refried be- beans, beans was, was the, <laughs> the acme of Mexican cooking yes but we had a Mexican chef over one time uh, doing something in Dublin and he was fantastic, fantastic loads yes. of fish which you don't think of when you think uh, absolutely. Mexico absolutely and, and me- well and Mexican food is one of the, the big surprises actually because it's an incredibly diverse uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, cuisine from all over the country but also uh, I've had the opportunity to travel quite a bit so India and the East, uh, the East and Middle East and so on so I mm. we a little taste of all kinds of things and also people now uh, eminent chefs from all over the world and cooks will come to Ballymaloo it reminds me of the Duke of Leinster when they built Leinster House <laughs> uh, everything was on the north side over at uh, uh, Gardner Street and Mountjoy Square and he was said, why are you building on a swamp here? And he said, <laughs> where I go, fashion will follow. <laughs> well, so there's a touch of that with Bally Well, well, well I've also we have lots of guest chefs and for the Literary Festival of Food and Wine, which we had last year in May and next year, it'll be between 16th and 18th of May again. My God, we've got such a lineup. We have some of the top chefs and, and food people from all over the world. Actually, Diana Kennedy from Mexico is coming uh, this coming year, as is Rennie Redzepi and from Noma in Copenhagen and Yotam Otilenga, the Enum at the boys from Otelengi in London as well. One of the extraordinary things that even in this post-Celtic Tiger era, chefs are actually in demand. There's a shortage of them and they're very well paid relative to the rest of the uh, economy. But you were telling me during the commercial break that you can turn someone and you intend to turn 60 of them in from someone (laughs) who can't boil an egg and three months later, now there is a a, a substantial fee involved, but down in Ballymaloo, three months later, they will be able to get a job working as a chef. Oh, absolutely, totally. We can take people literally from this is a wooden spoon to being able to earn their living from their cooking at the end of three months and they're just snapped up because there's a crisis in demand for chefs and once you can cook you can travel anywhere in the world and you can get a job so uh, it's a fantastic skill to have so on the last 12 week course actually which is just finished a lot of hugging and goodbyes uh, we had 13 nationalities so we have a, there's a big mixture of nationalities and ages we have some people changing career some people even borrow money or use redundancy money to do this because they're up it's about 10 grand isn't it yeah. oh indeed it is it's quite an investment but at the end of three months you can go out there and get a job which is great the next one starts just at the beginning of January alright now you're going to do um, some Christmas pud and a particular sauce now I've already decided the sauce <laughs> it is divine I'm not Mrs. a brandy Mrs. Hanran's sauce Mrs. Hanran's I'm not a brandy butter person I tasted this sauce and it is super, super. duper duper now while you're getting organised there Darina I'm going to uh, read out some of the texts because uh, they're, they're very interesting uh, love Darina just made her light Christmas cake she is never fat always good uh, and Pat don't forget the vegetarians that's from Alison Trim vegetarian Christmas oh yes well there's so many uh, options for vegetarian things all those wonderful uh, bean stews and lentils and uh, things like that and lot, all those wonderful vegetables you can get now and the most uh, this year the, the persimmons and those Sharon fruit are in the shops ripe for the first time so make a lovely starter with that with uh, pears and uh, pomegranate seeds and, and so on so okay. lots of good things and another one says Pat Last year I had fillet steak for my Christmas dinner. The best ever. That's from John. Uh, dry turkey sandwiches just can't wait. Oh, by the way, Brussels sprouts are for rabbits. No oh, matter no. how you cook them, <laughs> they taste like yesterday's garden refuse. Who is he? I'll <laughs> tell him to come down to me and I'll convert him to Brussels sprouts. Uh, another one says, there's nothing traditional about turkey for Christmas. It's a relatively recent import from the USA. Goose, ham, spiced beef. Now you're talking, boy. Um, it is relatively recent, but it, for all my life, turkey has been on the table at Christmas. So for me, it's traditional. That's uh, for sure, for sure. Thanks, Drina. I bought a cook uh, school book. Honestly, the best book starts with the basics from boiling an egg to my Christmas goose recipe. I'm 28 and I'm a man. I was never taught to to cook and this book has saved me. All I wanted was the ability to create good, hearty food. Thank you again to Ballymaloo. Oh, that's so, so that's nice. nice. Well, the way nice to compliment. everybody's heart is still through their tummy, isn't it? Through their tummy. I'm right. about to bring you over some plum pudding now, plum Pat. Plum pudding with... <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. and, uh, well, I'll let you traverse there. I just want to mention uh, the book which won the Avonmore Cookbook Award of the Year. I mean, it's a fabulous, uh, big fat book, 30 years of Ballymaloo and it goes back into the history of Ballymaloo but of course it comes with uh, recipes as well. Anyone 
watching on the webcam will see it's a fine coffee table book it's it weighs a ton it's a big fat book uh, and it's complete with recipes as well so it's a, a terrific piece of history pecan and ginger crumble gluten-free raspberry muffins uh, chocolate and caramel mousse with dark caramel sauce they're the desserts I can go uh, uh, to other ends of the book to get uh, virgin Jersey butter uh, what else? Uh, there's so many. Uh, caramel ice cream. Oh, I keep going to desserts, don't I? What is it <laughs> about me? This is, and this is Mrs. Hanrahan's sauce. This is Mrs. Hanrahan's sauce. Uh, Let me was try given, this. This recipe was given to me uh, mm. by my uh, sister-in-law, Una, and it was her oh. mother's recipe. Her mother is now has passed on, sadly, but is immortalised in this sauce. It's so good. And we put the recipe up on the website Please, for you. Just sit yeah. down there. Or I can tell you what's I'm, in it uh, if you have time. This. this is absolutely beautiful. Good. That's How my mother's recipe, actually. That's your mother's Elizabeth O'Connell's, like many any plum pudding recipes has passed down to the family and there's no flour in it so it's very light and crumbly. Okay well we're going to put all the details of your recipe and your Christmas tips on our website. Good. And uh, just to uh, recommend if you're looking for a Christmas gift for the foodie in your life uh, this yes. one is certainly one to be cherished. And particularly for students who've been through the school it's a real trip down memory lane uh, for, of the 30 years. Well Doreen Allen thank you very much for uh, particularly bringing Mrs. Hanrahan's <laughs> sauce to me and everything it's else. It's a new discovery. Uh, and by the way we we have a couple of cookbooks to give away Good. so what I've, uh, I want people to do is just text us in 10 words only yes the recipe for a good Christmas. It doesn't have to be food. It could be anything. Good. Ten words only. The recipe for a good Christmas. And we have a couple of books uh, from Dorina to give away. Good. And I'll sign them for you. So 53106 is the text line number at a cost of just 30 cent. Uh, so once again, thanks to Dorina Allen.